Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. Today we have the DJI OM5. Now this is their fifth generation of these mobile gimbals and along the way they've made some drastic improvements but today I'm here to tell you what other reviewers have not been telling you including some of these vibration issues when you hit the limits uh, as well as how effective the selfie stick actually is. But all that coming up in this video. But first let's take a look at what we get inside the box. So inside the box of course you'll get the manuals and some setup guides as well as the OM5 itself. You get the included tripod legs as well which looks really sleek as well as a wrist lanyard. You also get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, a phone clamp and a rising pad for smaller phones as well as a soft case. However, you will not get this little ring adhesive thing that they did include in the OM4. Now that adhesive thing was a bit iffy and didn't really give me the confidence to use it well with the gimbal. So I'm glad they took that off the menu altogether. So here's my first impressions of the OM5. Now obviously it's a lot smaller than the previous OM4. It feels a lot lighter and of course the ergonomic design has changed as well. The previous one had a really joystick-like ergonomics which kind of wrapped around your hands pretty well but at the same time you kind of had to stretch your thumb a bit more just to reach the controls. This one is a lot more minimalistic and it fits around your hands just as comfortably without any extra bumps so it's really nice that they went with this minimalistic approach. Other than that, this thing does come in two different colours. Now this is called the Sunset White I believe and it's not exactly white, it's an off-white. It actually looks a bit more pinkish. Another question, why is it pinkish white, just go with the white, you know. Um, I mainly got this because I've been doing some rock climbing and bouldering recently and um, just that chalk gets all over all my equipment so I thought a whiter version would suit me better. So the other thing that you might notice when you start to fold this thing down is that everything folds into place neatly and it's pretty compact as you can see. However, this little joint here does not lock into place and it's kind of annoying because it moves about inside the bag and uh, I just wish they had some kind of locking mechanism for this. But other than that, you do get the same magnetic phone mount. Um, this is the same as the OM4. It clips onto your phone very neatly and it just attaches to the gimbal with a magnet. Now this magnet is really strong, it doesn't come off easily which is a good thing but it does come off when you need it too so that's also really convenient. So of course we do have to talk about the highlights of this new gimbal which is the telescopic selfie stick. Now this selfie stick is made out of a very durable plastic, it doesn't bend too much um, depending on the weight of your phone but most phones should not bend this selfie stick. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is of course the joint at the tip here. This will allow you to bend it a lot more and get a more selfie like um, position. So with all of the years mobile gimbals, the power really lies in the app. Inside the app you get a lot more control and of course all the smart features that comes with it. One of my favourite functions is the auto tracking which makes shooting a lot easier. You can use it at a stationary position like I did and track your subject as it's moving around or use it while you're moving the gimbal allowing you to keep your subject in the middle of your frame. The other thing that you can do is self tracking using the gesture mode. By raising your hand in front of the camera it detects you and starts the recording. Now this is really great especially if you're doing something alone and you want that auto tracking feature to track you in your frame. The other thing that you need to take note about the gesture mode is that it sometimes turns off on its own when you reset the app or when you change the different modes and that can get a bit annoying especially when you're shooting something by yourself. You can't really see the screen and see that the gesture control is turned off. So I made it a habit to constantly check on this gesture mode right before I'm about to shoot. However, I do have to say that this auto tracking feature does have some limitations when you get to a more crowded or densely detailed area, it kind of loses track of the subject quite easily. As you can see compared with the first footage over here on the left, it tracks the subject really easily as there aren't many details around the background as compared to this image on the right where there's a lot more details and the auto tracking kind of loses focus after a while. There are also other shooting modes that you can play with but we've covered all that in the previous video of the OM4 and you guys can go check that one out. But let's go back to the OM5 and kind of ask ourselves if this selfie stick really is a game changer. In my opinion, the selfie stick doesn't really change the range of your shooting if you're using it as a selfie stick. However, it does get you a bit more height if you're using it to shoot something else. Now here's a side by side comparison using the selfie stick on myself one having the selfie stick extended and one having it not extended. 
Now as you can see from the frame, there isn't much of a difference. However, what you can't see on the camera frame is the position of my hand, which is in a lot more of a comfortable position using the selfie stick fully extended. Now, like I said, this selfie stick does get you a bit more range. It is a 21 centimeter rod, so it does get you up higher in case you want to shoot some of those top down shots. And it does add a lot more flexibility to the way you shoot with a gimbal. But that all being said, the mechanics of how this rod is extended, you kind of have to grab onto the gimbal head and extend it, which doesn't feel very healthy for the gimbal. So hopefully that is something that could be improved, possibly an automatic extending arm in the future. I don't know. Because I just felt really weird holding onto one of the axes of the gimbal to extend the selfie stick while I'm shooting. Possibly it would be a lot better to turn the gimbal off, extend the selfie stick and then turn it back on but that could cause some balancing or calibration issues. Now, the one thing that really annoyed me about this gimbal was that it had a couple of limitations in terms of the gimbal axis. Now, first of all, there is no 360 rotation on this axis. I'm not too sure about how these gimbals are constructed, but in the regular gimbals that we've used from DJI, such as the Ronin and the Ronin S, you could do these 360 rotations, no problem. Um, but I'm not too sure what the mechanics is for the mobile gimbals, but that is a limitation that you would have to take note of. With the other rotation axis, there is of course limitations to how much you can rotate. This is to protect the gimbal arms as well as your device so that it doesn't clash into one another. The thing that annoys me about these limits is that it vibrates at each of the limits and that really ruins your footage. They could have just slowed down the motion and put it to a stop, but this vibration at each of the limits really annoys me and really ruins the entire footage. Now going back to the grey pouch that we get from the box. Now this is okay I guess, but at the same time you are putting three different items into a single pouch and that causes a lot of friction, damage, wear and tear over time and a simple solution would be just to include separate compartments inside this pouch. Now this is something I feel is an afterthought and something that DJI should have thought out more. Putting all these parts into a single pouch really gets on my nerves because I'm scratching up all of these gimbals and, and parts. And it just isn't a great feeling. So what I've done is actually ordered a separate third party case to neatly keep all these parts separate and in its own compartments. Now overall, this is a really good gimbal. It's lightweight, it's mobile, the motors are really smooth, but at the same time, you do have to put in some effort to keep your footage stable. You can't just rely on a gimbal and expect it to magically give you stable shots while you're flailing about and moving uncontrollably. So there are some limitations to a mobile gimbal, but as a portable option, this is something really compact and really convenient to bring around. Some of you might be asking if it's worth upgrading the OM4 to the OM5, and the simple answer is no, because the only thing that you're getting with the OM5 is essentially a selfie stick that's about 21 centimeters long, and that's not worth the upgrade. You get all the same firmware upgrades just by updating the app. And other than that, the motors work really well on the OM4 as well as the OM5. And there isn't much of a difference. They might say that it's quieter or smoother, but honestly, who can really tell the difference? The only thing that has been improved is possibly the ergonomics, a slight change in the weight of the entire product, as well as the additional 21 centimeter selfie stick not worth a couple of hundred dollars to upgrade. You might be better off just waiting for the OM6 to come out and then upgrade to that version. But I hope this whole video has been informative and helpful for you guys. If you guys have any other questions, do leave it in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. If not, head over to the DJI website to find out more and possibly pick this up for yourself. But that's all I have for you guys today. Do give a like if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.